Okay, hi, good morning, good day, 27 of Thomas. You, uh, let's, yes, <laughs> jumping in. Let's do our Rafua Shlemas for the day. Go ahead. Baruch ben Yamin ben Rafu Blima. And um, Haim Yaakov Zev ben Sara. He fell down the front steps and broke his arm. Um, Yehudas Golda Bas Elisa Hana and Shoshana Bas Hana. Before Shlema Bekore. Shlema. Devor Rachel Bat Mim Chava. Um, Lea Gela Bat Sima. Ben Yaman Bear Ben Hana and Hanka Bat Miriam. Before Shlema. Before Shlema. Uh, Fega Bas Shoshana and Esther Fega Bas Chaya Rachel. Before Shlema Bekorin. Yitzhak Five Yitzhak Five Ish Ben Braina Malka. Before Shlema. Amen. Anybody else? Okay, how you Today should be a Rafua. Because Zion is Russian, is the number Zach 27, pure, the purify. Okay, a brilliant and renowned scholar, exceptionally gifted and remarkably profound in his studies, came to Liozna, the Alter Rebbe, and threw himself into the study of Hasidus with his powerful intellectual propensity. It's a good word. He amassed within a short time a great and broad knowledge in Hasidus. At his first Yechidus with the Alter Rebbe, he asked, Rebbe, what do I lack? The Alter Rebbe said, you lack nothing, for you are God-fearing and a scholar. But you do need, however, to rid yourself of the Chumetz. you got everything. Now you've got to lighten your load in a very particular way. Burn the Chumetz, which is, he touched, awareness of self, I would say, preoccupation with oneself and aggrandize self, which is arrogance. And you've got to bring in matzah, which is bittel, renunciation of self. And he quotes now from the halacha about how to purify a piece of metal, like a knife. If you've roasted treif meat with it, the only way to kosher it is to burn it with an even as intense fire as you did to when you put it in the tray of meat. So he quotes, and this is it's in, bla in black marks here, a vessel used with fire. This is the knife, right, that you, or the spit, let's say, that you roasted non-kosher meat. So he darshans, a vessel used with fire. This is a person who is so arrogant and to consider himself like light. I am the light. For example, a roasting spit, thereby repelling the Shekhinah, right? By using the fire within you for the wrong, right? With passionate wrongness, you repel the Shekhinah. For God and he cannot dwell together. So how do you rectify that? You need to purge it through intense white heat. You need to burn the Hamas. This heat should be such that the sparks of the birurim, the sparks of purification, should fly and be absorbed in the true light. Burn away the yeshes. It's the whole big theme in the Voida of Yeshus Mitzrayim. And of course, it's a big theme here because we said the first thing, first step in the path to Shuva is to feel oneself to humble oneself. That's one of the, the first uh, uh, principle that we said. To arouse great mercy from Hashem for the fact that your self-fullness is keeping you away from Him and the arrogance that, of that is what separates. And practice the return, to the, which is a, a practice of humility, a practice of hachno. As we said, leif nishbar benidke a contrite and broken heart 
which leads to bitterness and resolve to remedy the situation. So right in tune with our theme here, right? Lessons in Tanya. Now we did today's uh, Tanya yesterday. So today we're doing Shabbos, which is chapter eight in this book here. It's on page 1065. 1065. And in this book here, if I get it, in Lakuti Amurim, this chapter, Ches, chapter 8, begins on page Tzadik Ches. Well, there's another one. Tzadik Ches is Tzach, which means light, illumination. I do this because sometimes, the, and you see this in Hasidus also, the dates, the numbers of the dates are elucidated according to Hasidus. Okay. So let's bring a little tzach, a little light into our life here in terms of the context of Shuvah. Chapter Ches. Hine. Achrei ha'amkes hadas b'chol hanal. After the deep knowledge, literally, that we have spoken about above and which I just recapitulated briefly. Yochel avachesh be'emes ma'umke d'libo. One can beseech in truth from the depth of one's heart that with your great mercy, Hashem, you erase sins. In other words, through the pre prelude, not the prelude, through the precursor of this, from the status, the precursing status of humility, of hachno, of giving oneself over to the process you know, first realizing the disconnect and being bitter about the disconnect and now asking great mercy in Hashem, one can in truth ask and sincerity ask for great mercy that Hashem should erase any iniquities. He is I, because then if one is in this posture that I just described of hachna and self-effacement, effacing the negative self, the, the clip of self, that will implant in one's heart, in truth, great mercy. One will be implanted great mercy and great pity in one's heart for the category on that category, which is the godliness in your soul. And as we said above, that the Rahmanis that you arise, arouse on the spark of God that's within you has the effect of arousing great mercy up above in the source, as we spent yesterday. And with this, this will arouse supernal mercy from the Yud Gimel, the 13 attributes of work mercy, which are drawn from God's supernal will, blessed be he, which is hinted at in the thorn, the little hook on the top of the yud. This is, I believe, the first time we've mentioned this in this context. We've been focusing on the letters, yud, k, vav, k, right? And shuvatator, returning the lower hay to the vav. But he mentions now and briefly, only in passing, the source of mercy, right, is a, is a higher than all of those four letters, and it's hinted at in the little thorn, the hook of the yud, which just gracefully points up above to a place higher than the four letters. The four letters, remember, being hochma, yud, bina, he, vov, the six, midos, and he, malchus, higher than that. And the root of that is what gets touched by a shuva nechuna, by a proper teshuva, by a proper sense of really wanting and striving and desperately yearning to return. That touches a point of the kaisa shel yud, back inside, which is much, much higher than the level of godly energy which flows from the letters themselves of the shem habaya. Therefore, which that's the that's them up above above the yud 
of the, the unit of the Shema Vaya. These 13 attributes of mercy, Minakim, since they come from such a deep source in Elakus and godliness, they, Menachem, they clean up all hapagamim, all of the blemishes. The Kamash Kasev is written in a line in Bar Midr, that he bears iniquity, meaning he carries it, and he deals with it and cleanses it. And the iniquity becomes clean. And this, by the way, is the compact description of Shuvatato. Cleaning up the the negative, washing it away, scraping it away, purging it, as our uh, language of our uh, of our yom yom today, and that's for shuv and yonikas kotsonim. And as a result, there's no longer any grasp of the external forces, the hasitar achra, and the out and the other side, right? The the clippers, gimel clippers, the tameus, the three unclean clippers. Now, from the lower hay. There's no longer any malchus, which is the lower hay, has been touched so that the force from it is not a kingdom of iniquity, but on the contrary, begins to be a kingdom of godliness. And this, in simple terms we've used, and he has used here and there over and over again, is the beginning of the transformation of the gullus to gaula, the investment and the infusion of Kedusha that comes from Shuvatator, from repentance, from desire and power to say, I do not want to be here anymore and I'm going to move from this side over to the side of Kedusha. And this is what we called earlier Shuvatator, which is returning the lower He, to her place, and uniting that lower hay with the previous letters Yud K and Vov, the Dilemaven, and this is easy to understand. Sufficient, really, is the word. This is sufficient for one to understand. We hope. The Chayin Mamish Lamatav. Not only does this restore things up above, but also down here below. The part, that aspect of the godly soul, the lower levels of the soul, which are invested in the body of a person. So no longer do your iniquities separate you. Remember the muscle of the rope, the 613 strands? You're weaving together the broken strands. You're making remaking the connections. So no longer does the iniquity, uh, there's no separation. As scripture says, Benakia, the person cleans himself, Menakia who? He, God himself, will cause cleaning. Leshovim, to those who return. Menakia, Menakia who? Leshovim, to those who return. Lerachetz, Velin Kesnafshem, and those who return are characterized as another much by those who, what is it? We wash out and clean our souls. Milavushim Hatsoim, from the dirty garments. Remember the garments, thought, speech, and action, right? Cleaning them up. Cleaning them up, our actions for sure, our speech, very careful, the Kadusha Dika speech only, only the speech that's proscribed uh, in Chachul Chanarak about how a Yid should talk, and one's thoughts, one's mind, one's seichel, cleaning all that up. And him, which are the external garments, Kamisha Kosebe Gomorrah, and the Gemara says in Gemara Sota, Melafasai, that one has to uh, clean up these clippers and wrap them, and wrap them like a garment. Get, your, get, get yourself together, right? Bring that all back. So now he's moving into the topic of Shuva Ilah, a higher Shuva. Once you've done that, restored yourself to the place where all the connections are made, right? You've turned yourself around, so to speak. And now since the literally the breath, the breath, the breath or the wind has passed and has now become it's become tahara, pure. 
So as I tochal nafsham l'shuvat havaya baruchu mamish. Now you can return. It's like step number one. You've turned around, and now you can get together. Right? I'm now facing God, and now I can get together with God. Shuv ad havaya. I can return to havaya mamish. Laalis my lamaila and rise up above and above, higher and higher lemakoda to what to the source of the godly soul. And to cling to Hashem, may He be blessed. The Yichud Nifla with a wondrous unity. This is the description of Shuva Ilah. To cling to God with a wondrous unity. After the return, you do the turnaround, and then you get together and hug and have a close relationship with Hashem. Just as it was, as the unity was that you had with Him, Yisborach. The Taklas Ayichud with a complete unity. Beterem shep shenifcha beruach piv. Before that, you are, your soul was blown into you with the breath of his mouth. This word, remember, the Neshama Shenasati, the Torah, the soul that's given to you is blown into you, and it came down, 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 and now you've turned around. Number one, Shuvat Tatoa, and you are now on the way back and achieving a unity with him. In the way that it was before that soul was blown into your mouth, into you through the through God's so-called mouth. And, and which is what caused you to your, your soul to come down here below. and being clothed in a body Adam of a person. Pay top of page 196. Back to the mushal of blowing. And just like this is a parenthesis, just like in the Mushal of a person blowing, Miruach Piv, the breath of his mouth, the Terem Shiyetse Haruach Mepiv, before the breath comes out of your mouth, Humayuchad bin Afshoy. It's interesting, this is united with your soul. He didn't quite say this yet, but it's yeah, this breath. It's, you know, we started with the breath, the breath coming out. Yipach Ba'apa Nishmashayim, he blew a soul, and that's the source of it. But the breath itself comes from a place which is totally united with it. The breath comes from somewhere. So this rock piv, breath of the mouth, is a breath which is meyuchet benafsho, which is united with one's soul. And therefore, when you do shuva eloh, you're united, if you could say such a thing, soul to soul, right? With the, with the soul of God from, in the place of origin from whence you came. Vizuhi teshuva shlema. And this Shuva Eloh is what's also called Shuva Shlema, complete Shuva. And he says now, this level of unity, the Teshuva Zu, and this return, this complete return, he begins Shuva Eloh. So now he names it. It's called Shuva Eloh, which is after the lower Shuva. It's written in the Holy Zohar, Zohar, the Raya Mehem, the Parshish Nase. The <coughs> Zohar writes, excuse me, that the Shuva Elah, he, the higher level of Shuva, what is it? It's the Yasik Be'araisi Be'dechili Be'rechimu De'kud Shebricho. You are totally occupied with the Torah. And here is the Aramaic word, which I've told us to men and mentioned this many times, Araisa. You're totally occupied with the light, the ore, which comes from God himself, that's the Torah, and you're occupied with it in fear and love, with Yavura and Chesed, and chesed of Kodesh, Hash Kodesh Baruch Hu. as it says, the Ihu ben Yudke Bina. This Ihu, he goes on the letter Vav, the letter Vav, we have Yudke, right, and we have Vavke, right, so between the two He's, we have a Vav, He and He, is a letter Vav. And the law Vav is the vertical connector. It's the rope. We've talked about this before, the rope from above to below. So the Vav is that level which connects the two Hays together from below to above and, fr and from above to below. The Yihu Ben Yudke. And it's literally, the Zohar calls it the son of the Yudke. Yudke Chachma Bina. And then Vav interfacing to Malchus. Um, um, and he says, now, after describing this process, which is the 
in this page, you've really got the totality of shuva, which is number one, through regret and bitterness to arouse a desire and a will to return. That's the turnaround. And then to actually negotiate the, uh, the turnaround and come close to Hashem, which is shuva Allah. Umay labal shuva and the virtue, the quality of those who do this, who are called balashuva, the maila of balashuva, al sadikim gemurim over the complete sadikim, the advantage that the balashuva has over the complete sadik, bezeh in this is who, mishkosa bezora kodesh as is written again in the zora, parshas chay sara, the inun mashbe ilayim birausa deliba, that they draw to themselves, upon themselves, bira'usa daliba, from and in and, and from that place and in the supernal will of Hashem, the will of the heart, which is the deep place of there's, you know, there's a will that affects the mind. And you know, I'm, I decide to think about this. But the really important, not that that's not important, but the the the, 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 the deeper is that will which comes and affects the heart, because the heart is the source of emotion, and emotion is the source of doing, right? We want this to come all the way down. So the so, so this is the Ra'usa uh, Daliba, Yatir. It gives a Baal Shuva has a stronger feel for that than a Sadi, because, number one, he's earned it. He's worked on it. He's overcome. As, you know, we've talked about this many times about when we've spoken about nisyonis, about difficulties. When the, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. When the world gets dark, a person begins to scream and yearn and hope and start to move. And that's a kayach, a gavura, that a tzaddik doesn't have because the tzaddik is constantly always bathed in light. As we can know the expression we can bring to a table, there's a myla, there's a virtue, that's the word we're using here, a myla, of the light which comes from darkness which touch comes from the depths of one's will, the Rusa de Liba, and with a greater strength, with a greater power than the power, than the, than the behavior of the tzaddik, the Skadavar Lamalka, because the Baal Shuva comes to Hashem with tremendous yearning, with tremendous desire that was cultivated from the distance and as a result, he comes much deeper, much closer. Well, I don't know much deeper. He gets very, very close to Hashem, to the king. And this is the Mila of the Baal Shuvah over the Sadiq Gamur, over the complete Sadiq. And that's, uh, that's Shabbos's um, Tanya. Shabbos, by the way, is also Shuvah, right? Shav, to return. So here we are. Eli Shava. Thank you. Uh, so it does say in the Aramaic um, that the Baal Tshuva is closer to the Malka, right? The Iskarva. Yes. Iskarva so, Yata, yes. I tried to um, say that about the tying of the rope, that it makes the strands closer to the king. I don't know where I heard that. I must have heard that somewhere. But that that um, that um, Mashal kind of, kind of follows considering yeah. what we just read here. Yeah, it does, absolutely. I've never heard that, but it's okay. But it's it's a tight, it's a, it's, you know, it's a strength that comes from overcoming. There's nothing like a strength. That, and when you win something through effort, there's not much, can't compare it to having it given to you on a silver platter. I guess I would, like, if I think about the Rebbe being a tzaddik and constant, and let's say normal people being like Bali Chuva. I can't imagine that a Bal Chuva is closer to Hashem than the Rebbe, but maybe because the Rebbe is so like let's say Tzadik, the Tzadik is so close to Hashem that the Bal Chuva can get to that level. No, but the Chazal actually do say that 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 a Tzadik can't stand in the place of Bal Chuva. But I don't know what that means. He can't stand in the place of <laughs> You can't compare the two. But let's let's throw something in. Tzaddikim are also, he says Mashiach will come to bring the Tzaddikim to Tshuva. Uh, what he's talking about here is a level, Tzaddik Gamur. Forget person, level. Tzaddik Gamur 
is incomparable to Baal Shuba. A Rebbe en encompasses, and us even, we can reach point of righteousness, not necessarily Sadiq Gamor, but we can, there's always deeper to go in righteousness itself. That answers the question, how does, what do you mean Mashiach is bringing the Sadiqim to Shuvah? They don't need to do Shuvah. Of course, they don't need to do Shuvah from Averos, but since Elikus is an infinite, what well, I mean, I don't want to say entity, an infinite, we're an infinite, an infinity. Since uh, Elikus is an infinity, there's always more to go, more to return to. So the Sadiq also does Shuvah, but his Shuvah is a different. So the, the, the Tzadik Rebbe is doing tshuva, even though he's a Tzadik Gamor. So here we're not, we're not comparing a Rebbe to a Baal Shuva person. We're saying Tzadik Gamor level, that level, right, is incomparable to Shuva level. Because Tzadik Gamor is a sense of arrived, I arrived. And Baal Shuva is a sense of continual arriving. I guess the Tzadik Gomor channels Hashem so freely, so clearly, that he's basically living Hashem. Like it's it's like a Merkava, like Hashem is actually living yeah. inside. There's no Chuba. Yeah. yeah, I'm just saying very don't don't cancel out in a Rebbe or Li Rebbe that he's not doing Shuba. Uh-huh. Yeah, I understand. That's all. Thank you. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Okay, before we end, therefore, so what? So what? I mean, what did we just learn this for? Maybe we should open our hearts and allow ourselves to get passionate about doing tshuva. Good, because, excellent. Because that 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 broken heart. Sometimes we don't let ourselves feel. Yeah, us. that's that's even right. That's the broken heart, the open heart. Yeah, beautiful. Pesher <laughs> Rivka. Um, Why are you laughing? Because you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you always have something to say. That's good. Yeah. I'm thinking. Um, to me, it's like it's tshuva. It's more than changing your behavior and your relationship it's it's actually changing your position in in life with respect to hashem it's um, mm -hmm. it's more than just mm -hmm. changing you know we think of doing chuva like a, through the three garments but it's more than that when you do, if you can do that you actually have it a different koyach, a different type of koyach. yeah that's you are different way you're, you're you are different before person. you're in a body that's kind of amazing. Yeah, that's that is. I mean, that's an interesting point that he says. Yeah, you're in a way touching that which you were before. Not in a way. He says openly, you're touching that which you was you the you before you were in a body. That's pretty deep. Thank you. Well, cool. and if you can stay, I mean, to maintain that, that would that would really be something. All right, <laughs> that's the so what. <laughs> Let's maintain it. At least in Shabbos, which gives us extra power because it's Lushan Shuv itself, right? right? And the whole world is, re all the worlds are returning, right? That's what happens on Shabbos. Everything gets elevated. So why not me? <laughs> why not us? Let's get in the stream. Uh, Good. In the stream of Shabbos. Shabbos. Anybody else? That's a good way to conclude it. Wow. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. We'll see you Sunday, Matisha. Thank you. Everything good. Please, God.